Hello and welcome to Tiny Code Christmas Day 7. So today's video is going to be a bit different. There is a challenge and it's listed on the website for you to take a look for today. But today we're just going to talk about overall size coding tips and tricks for the Tick 80 and the Pico 8. So before we get into any specific tips or tricks, I just want to outline some help and resources that are available to you on your size coding journey. The first being sizecoding.org, and that is a wiki that contains loads of information about size coding on a lot of different platforms and has some great tips and tricks for the Pico 8 and the Tick 80. And a lot of what is in this presentation is covered there. Next is the Love Byte Discord. If you're not there already, it is a great place to discuss your tiny code Christmas work and to get help on shaving an extra few bites off. And it's just great to see everyone taking part. Mastodon and Twitter are also great places to share your stuff. And again, if you do, and please do, uh, use the hashtag LoveByTCC to make sure that we'll see it. So if you're looking for some inspiration on your size coding journey, I would recommend the Field Effects Monday Night Bytes Byte Jam. And if you're watching this today, there is a Byte Jam tomorrow at 8 p.m. UK time. And that is on the Field Effects Twitch, and I will put a link in the description below. Next up, livecode.demozoo.org. This is an archive of Tick 80 and Shader Live Code. So these Byte Jams that we talked about, Byte Battles from Love Byte, all of that code is archived on livecode.demozoo.org ready for you to take a look and it has both bite jams and bite battles bite jams being more free form less restrictions and bite battles being time restricted and character count restricted next up nanogems.demozoo.org and this is a gallery of the best size coded productions across all platforms so there's definitely something there that would provide some inspiration and it will give you a good overview of the current state of the art some general demo scene videos for you then that I'd recommend that you watch if you are new to the demo scene and PS Enough has a YouTube channel with a lot of great content and the monthly demo scene reports are something that you can watch every month to get an update on what's happening in the demo scene and see what all the major releases are and all the major parties. There's also a video called What You Need To Know Coming Back To The Demo Scene In 2022 but it also serves as a pretty good video if you're new to the demo scene. There's also how to properly release a demo scene production, which tells you how to package and bundle your release for submission to a competition. Then Crypt has a introduction to demo scene talk from EMF that is worth checking out. Inverse Phase did a talk at Hope 2022, and that is a three hour long talk and combined demo show that covers pretty much everything in the demo scene. And then there's some Love Byte seminars on the Tick 80 and the Pico 8. But again, spoiler alert, a lot of the content that's going to be covered in Tiny Goat Christmas is also in these. So you may see something from a future day. So you're better off to save those for later. So let's talk about some size coding techniques. And we're going to focus on size coding techniques related to character limits at this point and when we go to compression later on we'll take a look at a separate set of tips and tricks for that so the first thing that we can do is reduce our variables reducing intermediate variable usage when we have a situation like this for example in our plasma we had our color out as a different variable so we had a variable for c for color that contained some sign values and then we plotted it here. So when you're finished your code and you're happy with what it looks like and you're probably not going to be changing it too much more, you can add the term straight in. And you see here we have reduced our code usage. We didn't have an intermediate variable. Now we still like C equals this and then we have to put a bracket either side of it because we need to multiply it by eight. So on the whole we saved maybe one or two characters and that'll and sometimes that's all you need so the next thing you can do is increase intermediate variable usage and when the expression appears multiple times for example in this sample we have this sine x divided by 10 plus t 
by 20 and then we have sine x divided by t plus 40 so we can take the commonality here which is the x divided by t plus uh, by 10 plus t and pop that into its own variable and you can see then we will have saved a good bit of code aliasing then um, save characters by assigning long function names to shorter variables across multiple uses so for example if I'm going to be typing mat.sign everywhere I can alias it to just sign or I can alias it to s and if I need to use cosine and sine then I can just and maybe some other math functions as well I can alias m to be math and use that as m dot and then the math function that I need so the square root is something that we've used to find the distance for our polar coordinates and stuff and raising the number to a power of a half is the equivalent of getting the square root so math dot square root can be replaced with power of half and that will save six to eight characters in tick 80 and then in pico 8 it'll save one to three and the reason for that is that obviously you don't have to use the math prefix in pico 8 and square root is four letters uh, to the power of 0.5 is three but you have the potential to shave two more characters off because in math that square root you had to include the brackets but depending on your expression in pico 8 you may not have to so obviously if there's uh, multiple terms you will have to but if it's a single variable or a single number you can get away with it and again another like, another optimization is you can just leave off the square root and just scale the value without much of a problem and again you might need something to be the distance it might not need to be the distance you might just need to know if something is further than something else in which case you won't have to use the square root to find that and you can save two to three characters by using a single loop to draw instead so for example I am going to go for i equals 0 to 32,639 and that is uh, 240 multiplied by 136 um, which is 32,640 but we're starting at 0 so we'll go for 32,639 and each time around the loop we calculate x by modulo 240 and we calculate y by dividing 240 so we can save two characters on the loop by using exponent notation which means that we'll be replacing 32,639 with 4e4 so let's take a look at 4e4 which is 4 by 10 to the 4 which is 40,000 so that is a good few loops extra you are not going to be doing 32,000 as we saw previously you're going to be doing 40,000 so that's a trade-off between size and performance do you need your thing to be performant or do you need to shave off some characters and if you're using picks that will clip but if you're using poke it won't so you may access some memory outside of the screen so in general with tick 80 and pico 8 your entire program can be reduced to a one-liner and you can either just eliminate new lines or you might have to put a space in there so for example this is a basic tick 80 function that prints high and it's all on one line and you can see there needs to be a space after function but there are no other spaces required in this program so hexadecimal notation is one of the things that can cause a problem when we try to put everything on the one line so avoid using single letter variables um, a through f in upper or lower case and also avoid using x because that can be seen as part of a hexadecimal constant as well so if we take a look at what this means I have a bunch of variables here g h i j and I've initialized them all to these values I am size coding so I'm going to then remove the new line between all of them and have them um, like all on the one line and you can see that that does not pose a problem I'm now adding a equal to zero and as soon as I add a equal to zero I'll start getting malformed numbers near and you can see 136a so it's after trying to interpret 136a as some kind of a hexadecimal number instead of a variable so keywords need to be followed by a space and do needs one before it as the d could be hex so if i take for i equal to 0 to 
239 do if i leave off the space there that is going to be per treated as a malformed number and if i remove the space here it's just not going to work because there needs to be a space after the keyword so we can't do either of these optimizations so now we're going to take a look at size coding techniques specific to the tick 80 and one that we can do is we can approximate the cosine using sine and this is something that is um so this is something that's useful if you don't have the space to use both sine and cosine or you don't have the space to alias cosine for example more of a problem on the tick 80 than it is on the pico 8 but we'll take a look at it anyway so this is our sine and we can approximate it by having our angle and subtracting 11. So sine and cosine are the same thing. They're just 90 degrees out of phase. And if you go back and watch the sine code, um, and if you go back and watch the sine and cosine visualizer, you'll see that. And 11 radians is approximately 630 degrees. Two full revolutions is 720. So when you subtract 630 from 720, it gives you 90 degrees. So this will technically have two revolutions involved, but at the same time, the sign of that angle is going to be the same as the cosine. And you can also add plus eight, but that is less accurate, but you can save one character. And, and again, that will depend on how accurate you need your sine and cosine to be. So you can use the built-in load function to load your code as text, and you can omit parentheses from function calls if there's a single argument, and that is a literal string. So instead of function tick brackets, new line, print high, end, you just have tick equals load and a single quote and your code and a single quote at the end. The entire program needs to be on one line and you will need to escape some special characters, for example, backslash, that are inside of the strings. So substrings then, and this is a technique that we already looked at as part of our sign scroller, but we can uh, use some of these extra tips here to optimize it. So I have text, hello, and a variable, and I can use string, sub, text, ii, as we saw already, but I also have text, sub, ii as well. And that will, again, we're using i and i as the start and finish, meaning it will pull out one particular letter first at a time. And so text sub will give me that. I can also remove my variable altogether and put the string in parentheses and call sub directly on it. And you can see how I might use that inside of the print function here. And obviously this print function will be inside in a loop with i iterating over each letter in the string. So now we'll talk about some size coding techniques that are specific to the Pico 8. So go to is something that you can use in your program. And in this case, they are used to replace the draw function with a label and a go to. So you will create your label with the two colons and a single character usually. And again, on tweet cards and stuff like that, you might see the heart emoji or something like that being used. And your code will go here, obviously. And then there's a flip function and flip waits for the screen to synchronize. And then you can go to label and it will go. Pico 8 copies the frame buffer to the screen 30 times per second anyway. So you can omit flip if you're not too concerned about the state your effect is in when it gets copied to the screen. And if you want to use a custom palette and reorder the colors, you can use a palette maker created by 2D Array that will allow you to visually select the colors that you want in your palette. And then you can enable output in tweet jam mode and it'll give you this lovely P8 ski um, uh, string that is basically full of control codes that are going to set up your palette. And this, these control codes, P8 ski, Pico 8 ski, um, are well worth looking into because there's a huge amount of savings to be had in your character counts. So for example, these come from a tweet from Zep, uh, Pico 8's creator, and these are some shorthand 
for the square root flip and CLS so something that's um, we saw earlier with the flip and for max that will again save you a good few characters so it's really worth digging into the documentation on this sort of stuff if you really want to squeeze every character possible out of your Pico 8. So that's all we have for today and hope to see you back tomorrow for the next challenge.